I've decided to make myself a small engine workbench. Uh, I want to make it big and heavy enough that not only can I mount on uh, horizontal shaft small engines like for go-karts and mini bikes and stuff like that, but also big enough that I could even mount on uh, vertical shaft engines like V-twin lawnmower engines and stuff like that. So let's get to it. I'm going to use 4x4s for the legs because they are really big and heavy and I want this thing to be heavy enough that when I go to crank on an engine it's not just going to topple over and I'm going to build this thing it's going to be two feet by two feet and as far as the height I just haven't really measured yet I think it's going to be somewhere just a just below waist height uh, so it'll be like really comfortable to work on stuff and easy to uh, use a pull starter and not have to go way up in the air or reach way down low for it. And I'm going to build it based on the same design that I used to build my main workbench, which is completely atrocious right now. Uh, it's a work in progress. I'm getting everything out and putting it on the workbench and then trying to find homes for everything, which is uh, easier said than done. This piece of quarter inch plywood is already two feet wide so all I really need to do is measure out two feet and lop it off. Actually I'm probably going to end up doing that twice because just like on my other workbench uh, I think it'd be nice to also have a bottom shelf on there not only for stability but for extra storage. Alright, I'm just going to get this marked off at 24. And that's probably pretty close for our purposes. We're building a workbench, not uh, some classic piece of furniture or something. Now, for better or worse, I have the idea of just using the piece I just cut to mark the next one. Assuming that the uh, original cut was square, right? I think it'll be pretty good. Second All right, I got both pieces cut out. Uh, I just replaced the uh, saw blade before starting this with a Whamma Jamma $6, I think it was like $6, Harbor Freight circular saw blade. And it actually did a surprisingly good job. The edges are really smooth. Thumbs up. All right, so essentially I'm just making two square two by four little boxes, frames, I guess you would say. And since I want the table to be 24 by 24, 
and the two by fours are an inch and a half, I'm going to need two cut at 24 inches, which could go, say, along the front, and then two more cut three inches shorter to make up for the thickness of the two by four. So two cut at 24 inches and two cut at 21 inches. And I will double that up because I'm going to be having the top shelf and the bottom. decent cut. Can't beat that. Like a six dollar saw blade and a free flashlight as usual. So I'm gonna cut the rest of these and cut back to this once they're all done. Alright, there's all the frame pieces cut out. Now I'm fixing to start on making the legs. And I took a few measurements of my other workbench and it's the height of it's a little higher than I want this one to be just because I don't want to have to stand on a step stool or something like that just to you know get my hand on the the puller and try to crank these engines over so I'm gonna make it about three three inches or so shorter than that one so I'm gonna cut out four legs at 31 inches of course the ultimate table will end up being 31 and a quarter because the plywood is gonna go on top Oops, so it's 21. Oops, that would have been really ridiculous. 31 is what we're looking for. And I'm going to have to mark this on the other side because the saw blade will not go all the way through 4 inches. kickback doing stuff like that. Close, close enough. All right, now I just gotta do that three more times. All right, there's all the pieces cut. Now it's time for assembly. So I'll get everything laid out on the floor to make the frames. So that way I'm gonna use the concrete as kind of my level surface. So I'll get everything laid out and I'm going to use a framing nailer to tack everything together and then once the whole bench is built, I'll go back behind that with uh, decking screws so that way it's, it's more secure than just the nails. Alright, now I'm just going to get this all tacked together using a framing nailer, which I have a long-term review on this particular nailer. You can uh, click the link right here and it'll take you to it. It serves me well. And dirt cheap. Thank <laughs> you. 
So this is going to get laid out pretty much like this. Or not. That's not right. What am I doing? gives me a two foot square. So I'll just get it all tacked together. I'm gonna try to keep those painted surfaces to the inside if I can. Just so just so it's more aesthetically pleasing. Assemble the other one the exact same way. Now it's just a matter of taking the legs, positioning them in each corner, and going through and tacking those on each side. Two, two nails on each side, which is what I've been doing on just pretty much everything. And then after I'm done with that, I will go back and back up that with two screws in each spot, too. So it should be really secure and sturdy by then. Maybe even overkill, but that's okay. There's something living in this one. I can hear it buzzing. I have a pretty good idea of what it is too. That is a carpenter bee hole. Or a would be. I don't know how much of a carpenter they are. All they can do is drill holes. So, that's different. All right, so there's the whole thing flipped over right side up. And now I'm going to measure down from the bottom of this surface and see where exactly I want to put this bottom shelf because that will dictate where that gets nailed on. I'm thinking about here would be the let's go 14 inches. So that would make the top of the shelf right here and the bottom of it would come to about right there. I still want it to be able to, to get under and clean or whatever or stash stuff underneath it. So that would give me about nine inches of clearance. So I could definitely hide some stuff under there. So now I'll just go through and mark all those spots. 
All right, so I've gone through and made marks and then put a line at 14 inches all the way around. So the idea is to take this bottom part and just slide it up until I'm on the lines and then tack it in place. And as you can see, since this top part is exactly the same as the bottom part, how much these legs have all caked out because I'm going to have to kick them back in. Just like so. Now the tricky part is going to be raising this up and tacking it in place by myself. side before I start going willy-nilly with the nailer just to make sure I don't get it crooked. And that looks pretty good. Now all I gotta do is put on the uh, the top and the bottom shelf. Well, I gotta cut the bottom shelf to fit that, but you get the idea. Get it all squared up. Best I can. Drill batteries is stone dead. I'll skip ahead until that is done. Okay, now I've got to address the bottom shelf and hope that I can actually put it in there afterward, which is going to be the tricky part. Uh, I was able to do it on the other workbench because there was so much space in between the legs. I was able to bend the uh, plywood and kind of coax it into place, but I don't think that's going to work in this situation, so I'm going to give this a thought and check back in in a second. Well, after wrecking my brain with it a bit, uh, I've come to the conclusion that it's not going to work. Because the legs on that one were really far apart. And it just it worked a lot easier. This, that's not going to be 
able to happen. So the only thing I can do to have any sort of bottom shelf would be to mount the shelf instead of on the top surface, it's gonna have to mount on the bottom surface, which means it's gonna have a lip all the way around it, which is not ideal. But as far as storage and stuff goes, it's, it's better than nothing. It just means I won't be able to slide anything heavy off of the bottom. I would actually have to lift it up and out, which is no fun if you're a lazy old guy. All right, I got it flipped upside down again, and it looks like if I... cut out notches... I'm going to say, uh, be generous and do it at five and an eighth all the way around here at all four corners of the board that's going to go there. I should be able just to slide it right down. So I will get to work on that. All right. So I just basically measured from here to here five and an eighth and from here to there five and an eighth and then just use my square to make little boxes to clear the legs on all four corners. So now all I gotta do is get them cut out. Alright, now to see if I can do this with a uh, worn out body saw with a even more worn out blade but I've got faith well, that's not working Fastest thing in the world, but yeah, it'll do. So I'll just do the other three and come back to you. All right, I got all four corners cut out. So now, with any luck, this should just drop right in. Voila! I think that'll work. Now, all I gotta do is I'll run around and Put some screws in it, flip it over, and we're just about done. All right, I got it flipped back over. I went ahead and put screws all the way around that bottom shelf. And now, about the only thing left to do is to go ahead and set an engine up there. I just so happen to have one that I can use to mark the location of a horizontal shaft type Briggs and Stratton engine and I can just go through here set it there mark the four holes where it's going to go and yep that is what is next on the agenda it's really sturdy and quite heavy which is a good thing All right, I got this old Predator uh, Harbor Freight six and a half horsepower engine 
This thing's been sitting outside for upwards of about five years and it's completely locked up. And I'm gonna use this to uh, mark some holes so that way I can uh, mount engines like this to my little stand here and keep them steady and I can you know, crank on them and stuff without it wanting to go all over the place. So I take a little pencil and I cut it off to really short so that way I can kind of get down in there and hopefully I can wiggle it around enough to leave some sort of mark of some sort that I can see. So I know where to drill the holes. Now this other side is going to be the one that's tricky. Because there just really isn't a whole heck of a lot of room. Right down in there. Alright, now we'll pull that away and see if we can actually see the marks. I'm going to drill these slightly oversized so I have a little bit of wiggle room when I'm trying to line it up on there and get some bolts to it. I went to the hardware store and got some quarter inch by two inch bolts, some washers and wing nuts. Since we'll be reaching up underneath this to get everything tightened down, I figured wing nuts would be a lot easier to, to manage than having to use a wrench underneath there. Holes. There's one. Two, three, and go. Cool. Set everything tightened down. I think it's gonna work really good. It's on there really solid. I'll be able to crank on it with no issue. So now I'm gonna get this off of there because I'd like to also use this bench for some of the other bench top tools that I have that I don't have any real room to put them. Uh, so I just end up having to store them away. So I'll also put on my uh, bench grinder that has the buffing wheels on it because I don't have it anywhere other than just sitting underneath the, the workbench right now. I can make some holes for it so when I'm not working on the engine I can switch it out and put that on there and I'll also now have a home for my belt sander as well. And of course whenever I you know get around to doing any work on a like a larger uh, vertical shaft engine I can also put that down on there mark holes and then I'll be able to use this for all sorts of different stuff. Now, to avoid any future confusion, I'm going to go through here and whenever I drill holes to mount something there, I'm going to mark the holes as to what they are. So for this, I'm just going to mark these as HS for horizontal shaft. go over here and get this uh, bench grinder with buffing wheel attachments on here. I'm going to get that marked up and do it the same way as the engine. Alright, I've got the holes drilled for 
my bench grinder here that's got the buffing wheels on it. I'm going to switch one of these buffing wheels out for a, a wire wheel because I really don't have any need on having, you know, two buffing wheels. That's kind of redundant. And my belt sander, oddly enough, doesn't have any mounting holes or anything like that or any way to mount it. So when it's in use, it will just sit there just like that, which is okay by me. So this little workbench was really easy to build, really cheap, and it's going to have several uses and I say serve me pretty well for a long time because it's, it's built pretty sturdy. And you're going to be seeing that guy again real soon in a future video, so stay tuned for that. Well, if you like this video and this little project here, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment below if there's any questions or anything like that. Uh, let me know what you'd like to see maybe in a future video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to hit the notification bell because that lets you know when I post a new video. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. See ya. Well, I thought I was done with this workbench, but I just actually had a, a bit of an idea. These guys, about a year or two ago, Harbor Freight was giving these away as free items. 18 inch magnetic holder. So, I had the idea to take that guy and put it right there on the side so that way, while I'm working on stuff, instead of just having tools rolling around all over the place, I can attach them right there. managed to snag up three of these things while they were giving them away. I actually have one behind my uh, stovetop in my house where I keep all like uh, frequently used items like spatulas and chef's knives and what have you. And it's worked great in there. So stands to reason it'll work great out here too. Sweet. See you guys in the next one.